Well, welcome everybody. We're at the top of the hour, so I want to go ahead and get into this. So I value your time and I appreciate you being here. Today's executive director's chat is all about embracing diversity and cultural differences. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here, but I'm so excited to have Lashika Phillips here. She's going to tell you more about her, but she is the director of equity, inclusion, and diversity here at TechSoup, and she wears multiple hats. Don't let her fool you. It's not just one title. She wears multiple hats here. If this is your first time, you know this is not our regular webinar. You are on a Zoom, so some of you are already on camera. I've seen your faces, so hi, welcome. I'm going to show you how you can participate. Please remain on mute as you come in. You are automatically on mute, so don't unmute yourself unless we come to the chance where with the opportunity where you can ask a question. You can use your raise your hand option, or if you're on camera, just give me a wave, and I'll see you and ask you to unmute uh, we would love for you to participate in this discussion, so stay tuned. I'm going to turn this over to Lashika, and I'm looking forward to this. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, um, and thank you so much for the brief intro, Aretha. Uh, as she said, my name is Lashika Phillips, and I am the Director of Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture here at TechSoup, and um, I have been a part of you know, just various roles in the nonprofit sector for the past 20 something years. And uh, I, I just absolutely love being a part of mission driven work. I'm also passionate about AI. And we have a, a webinar coming up next month, a part of this EB chat series that I'd encourage you to join if you are curious, interested, or beginner in learning uh, generative AI specifically. But just really just want to let you know that I'm beyond excited and happy to be able to be here with you today to continue our conversation. You know, we started this ED chat series with the basics um, last, last month. And so today we are going to go over a little bit more about embracing and celebrating um, diversity within small teams. So we're gonna explore some key terms that uh, help us uh, understand um, diversity and cultural differences and how we can uh, weave that into our day-to-day. -day. We'll also dive into dimensions of diversity. If you're not familiar with that term, um, we will cover that. We'll also cover belonging, a cultural competence, and we'll discuss the business and human case for belonging. I'm sure you, I'm sure that all of you know about uh, business cases, right, for belonging, but we're going to dive into human case really uh, today. And then we'll have some time to discuss practical tips, um, to enhance uh, your team's uh, culture and collaboration and inclusion and engagement as well. So as with our first webinar, we will have time, I promise you we will have time for Q&A at the end, but strongly encourage you to raise your hands um, throughout the conversation and uh, feel free to chime in uh, when you'd like. So let's get started. And before we dive into the content, I have to start with this friendly reminder slash disclaimer. So just to let you know that TechSoup um, is not legal or HR advisors. I'm not an attorney, although I wanted to be one when I was a kid. I'm not. And none of this information should be considered legal advice. Um, and we are not experts of DEI. Uh, we have, however, started our own journey, like many of you here, and we're excited to share our lessons and insights with you. And so, and we're excited to do that with the hopes that you are inspired to take action to implement equity related, related initiatives uh, across your organization. So with that, let's dive into some concepts and terms to help us best understand diversity and cultural differences. So I wanna draw your attention to the graphic on the slide. So this image is a Venn diagram and it has three overlapping circles. Each circle represents one of three key concepts. So we've got diversity, equity, and inclusion in those circles. And where these three circles overlap in the center is a shared area labeled belonging. So this image really illustrates the interconnectedness of diversity, equity, and inclusion are the three pillars that together foster an environment of belonging. 
which is highlighted there in the center. Uh, I really do believe that this image encapsulates the, the essence of our journey towards a more inclusive workplace. And so as we look at these, uh, these terms and these components, let's look at dimensions of diversity. I know that you know, we're all familiar with, I wanna say the primary, right? When we think about primary um, the diversity the stage, well not stages, but it's a, it's a broad spectrum, right? And so with, these, with this broad spectrum of differences, we're all familiar with ethnicity, gender, age, but it's beyond that, right? It, it includes socioeconomic status. It also includes abilities, cultural background, and so each of those aspects make up our collective identity. And if you want to dive more into dimensions of diversity, I have included a link um, in this, and you will get a copy of the recording. You will get a copy of the slides where you can dive into the dimensions of diversity. There is a wheel um, that gives you more information, more detail, um, where you can um, discover more about the dimensions of diversity. I just think it's very important that we understand that it's more than... <laughs> meets the eye, right? Because it is. And so that um, that that image and that infographic and that resource can help you a, a bit more there. Now, moving on to belonging. So belonging, which is when people feel like they truly belong and are comfortable to show up authentically. And so here I've linked a free ebook about belonging that covers the four components that really make up belonging. And so when we think about what makes up belonging, what makes up belonging are identity, agency, power, and flow. I'll say that again, it's identity, agency, power, and flow. And in this um, ebook that we have linked here, it covers each one of those components and um, gives you an idea of how to foster all of this within your workplace, within your teams, even if you have a small team. And so lastly, let's look at cultural competence. And when you think about cultural competence, think about these things. Think about understanding your own cultural identity. Also think about being able to recognize bias first within yourself, right? And then as well as for others. Also think about gaining insights into other cultural practices and other norms. And lastly, definitely not least, when you think about cultural competence, think about developing the skills necessary for effective cross-cultural interactions and engagement. And so I've linked a, a really, really great guide. It's, it's actually a, it's a blog post. And it's a blog post specifically um, created for nonprofits. Uh, about uh, weaving all of this into our day-to-day -day work. So I've linked that there for you to um, discover and read through in your own time. So I'm going to pause here. I'm going to see if there are any questions. Let me go to chat really quick. Are we, are, is, can I keep going? Are there any questions I need to address? Yes, you can keep going. No questions okay. at this time. Okay, awesome. So Let's now look at the case for belonging. Now, at the core of our uh, nonprofit culture, really do believe that there should be a commitment to fostering belonging. So when thinking about the case for belonging, I believe we all understand the business cases for belonging and inclusion, right? So this is an opportunity for everyone to engage. Please put in the chat right now, a business case that you are aware of for belonging and inclusion. Let's see what we have. Again, some business cases for belonging and inclusion. And I've actually almost kind of given you some answers on the screen, but what, what are you all know? What are you saying in your, okay, better staff retention. I'm seeing that, yes. Better outcomes. Yes, yes. Anyone else? business case for uh, inclusion. Yes, yeah, stronger work relationships, trust, absolutely. These are really, really great. Staying relevant, absolutely, absolutely. All of these are 100% correct. Great camaraderie, yes. Diverse crew, absolutely. 
ability to communicate more openly. You all, so I, as I said, we are all very familiar with the business case, right, for inclusion. Thank you all so much for um, uh, putting in chat freedom. Absolutely. And that freedom, if you dive into the Belonging ebook, you'll see that that is a part of that agency, that power, that flow. You will see all of that there. Someone says more creativity for solving challenging problems. Absolutely, because everyone is a part. Everyone is contributing. Collaboration, absolutely. Absolutely. These are great. These are absolutely great. Now, let's look at the human case for belonging. So I attended a Microsoft webinar a couple of years ago, and it was about um, inclusion and diversity. And I learned a great deal about the neuroscience of exclusion. And I've shared the recording uh, there for you. I highly recommend every leader watch the video. It's, it's rather short. And in the video, uh, Microsoft executives explain the business, the human, and the geopolitical case for inclusion. Did you know that exclusion is processed in the brain like physical pain? So basically what this means is when a person feels excluded, when they don't feel like they are a part of the whole, the brain processes that as if it was physical pain. So this not only affects personal well-being, but it also impairs cognitive functions and workplace performance. I think we can all agree on that. That when people feel excluded, their ability to collaborate, to innovate, all of those things that we just put in the chat, it diminishes. So by prioritizing an inclusive environment, we address this pain head on, right? Enhancing both individual as well as collective well-being. So strongly believe that, um, you know, it is so important for leaders to ensure that individuals feel genuinely valued and connected, that they feel part of the whole. And the cost of ignoring that is far too great, right? For the human term as well as business term. And so one way to ensure that people feel part of the whole is to make sure that we're using inclusive language when referring to people. And so, you know, just taking a step back for a moment and reflecting on our previous discussion at the last webinar that, that we had last month, a part of this series, and we had a very great discussion about the term BIPOC. And we heard various opinions on its uh, inclusiveness as well as its potential inequity. So my question that I wanna pose to the group here as we're thinking about the case for belonging, how can we balance the use of inclusive language while respecting and acknowledging distinct cultural identities and histories? How can we do that? And I know that's a loaded question, but it's something for us to think about. Anybody have any thoughts here? I think you're going to have to give people a moment to process this because this is yes. heavy and deep I, conversation. It's so good, Lushika. Oh, this is good. I'm glad. I, I, I love I love these moments of silence. But thank you, Chris. And Chris said, bring the strength and gifts out of each individual. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anyone else? with care, absolutely. And you know, when, and Joe, thank you for saying that with care. And when you say with care and looking at what Kristen said, it takes me back. Do y'all remember the um, the webinar we did last time? I spoke so much about intentionality. It's gonna take intention, right? Gonna take intention. Speaking less and listening more, yes. So at TechSoup, we call that active listening. Active listening, absolutely. Empathy and, oh, what's that? Empathy and active listening, absolutely. Absolutely. 
have respect for our culture, by people's past and education. Absolutely. These are all really, really great ways for us to be able to balance this need. No judgment. And no judgment is it's hard sometimes, right? Because we show up with bias. We all have bias. So it's just being reminded of that, right? Checking, checking our checking our biases. Use the word all often. Yes. Yes. All, everyone, us. You will even hear me say, if you're on a call <laughs> for tech suit business, I will say Ubuntu. I am because we are. Yes. I think we need to celebrate our differences as our sameness. Yes. Oh, this is good. I feel like I'm snapping over here. Oh, this is really, really great. Yes, yes, um, yes to everything that you all have put in the chat. Feel free to keep it going if you like. Um, this is really, really, really helpful. So let's look at now that we we've, we've had this discussion and folks have shared some some ways in the chat. Let's look at now some practical ideas, right, for embracing diversity and cultural differences, and so. Here, uh, I'm going to speak a lot about some some ways that TechSoup has done this, using TechSoup as a kind of like a, a case study or an example. And um, feel free to chime in. This is a great opportunity. If something uh, comes to mind, feel free to come off mute or raise your hand. Really appreciate some engagement here so that we can all walk away with a lot of ideas, right, that we can implement for our, for our teams, for our organization. So when thinking about having ideas and uh, opportunities for engagement around embrace the diversity and cultural differences, uh, we have to look at organizational structure as well as organizational culture. So when you think of structure, think of um, policies, right? Processes, think about that. And then you're thinking about the organizational culture, think more so um, people and engagement, community engagement. So when looking at these uh, two aspects, looking at organizational culture, um, the first thing you want to look at is recruitment and hiring practices. So one of the things that we've done at TechSoup is we've created our uh, HR, we call it people and culture here at TechSoup, and our people and culture team, what they've done is with the help of our uh, a couple of employee-led groups that I'll talk about shortly, um, they have created a, a toolkit with various resources for managers that include um, great interview questions, um, tips for equitable job descriptions, a list of recommended sites to post jobs, and the list goes on and it's uh, constantly revised, right? To make sure that the information is relevant. And so that's one, that's one way, right? There are so many other ways. Feel free to put in chat what are some things that you do around recruitment and hiring to ensure that you are embracing diversity and celebrating cultural differences? Would love to see these in the chat. And so while you're thinking about those things, let's look at employee-led groups and initiatives. And again, recognizing that this webinar series is specifically for small teams. So some of this, you, you may feel like, oh, this doesn't apply to me because uh, I, it's a small team. All of this can be done with a small team. So when you hear that I'm sharing some things that TechSoup has done, there are ways that we can be creative where you can implement some of those things as well, right? So employee-led groups. So you may say, our team is too small. We don't, we don't have enough people for all of these various groups. Well, consider one group. Um, at TechSoup, when we started out, we started out with the Diversity Council. And so the Diversity Council was just its staff from all over the organization interested in championing uh, diversity and inclusion across the organization and in the sector. And so they began to meet every month, planning various events. And so that group has, it, it's, it's still uh, standing and it's still growing. And, uh, but that's our diversity council. So if you, don't, if you don't feel that you have enough resources or enough people for various groups, consider something like that. But if you can have multiple groups, consider affinity groups. And so at TechSoup, we define affinity groups as uh, groups that are, you know, creating space for people with shared 
of characteristics of shared identity. And then our employee resource group that we have is a space for people who are committed to a specific initiative that supports um, the business need of, across the organization as well as community engagement. So our employee resource group of TechSoup is around is specifically for racial justice, right? So just giving you an idea of how we have um, embedded this in our organization, especially with the employee-led groups. Um, moving on to, oh, please put in the chat if you have uh, affinity groups in your organization, or if you thought about um, starting some groups. This is a really, having these groups, I have seen, it really helps to empower individuals from various backgrounds um, to really voice their perspectives and to contribute to the success of the organization. And I really believe that these groups not only support diversity, but they also foster a sense of a belonging and community. So if you have any resources or things that you want to share, please, please put all of that uh, in the chat for, for all of us. And then learning and development. You know, investing in regular training that promotes diversity and cultural competency, it prepares all of us to embrace and celebrate differences, right? Uh, enhancing collaboration and innovation across the organization. Last year, uh, it takes so we completed an org-wide uh, learning series and we were able to work with a third party, but there are other ways that you can approach learning and development, right? There are LinkedIn learning, there are other various webinars, in-person events and conferences, um, I also recommend professional networks and clubs, uh, if you can find those. They they are, I don't want to say everywhere, but they, they are so many different professional clubs that you can be a part of. Some, yes, for uh, a fee, a cost, uh, but then there are some that don't have a, a fee associated with it at all. So um, also I'm thinking about other internal efforts that we've done around learning and development. And I'm reminded that we host these cross-regional networking events. So it's an opportunity to learn in a different way. We're learning from each other peer to peer. And so we are learning about the work that they're doing, but we also get to learn about what's happening in their part of the world and how is that impacting their work or not. You know, just learning, uh, you know, just in depth about not just that person, but that region, that culture, which then helps with collaboration, right? So I'm going to pause there just to see if um, there are any questions, if there's anything that anybody wants to um, share about some of the uh, organizational structure uh, ideas or tips that they may have when thinking about embracing diversity. Uh, any, oh, I see a question here. Any chance we could get that list of places to post the roles? That's a really great, great question. So I think that we have that. Um, if it's not posted in Quad, I think it, it will be. So for those of you who are in Quad, you will have access um, to those additional resources. Um, and so, Malia, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If you're interested, please reach out and um, we can we can give you access to that. Any other thoughts here before we dive into organizational culture? I see a one hand raised. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I did not see that. Yes. Feel yeah. free to unmute yourself. I just okay. raised it. Is it okay if I unmute? Yes, yes please. I just wanted to ask, um, we have a very small four staff person organization, but we work with employers on workforce development for youth, for working with students and interns and recent high school and college graduates in the workplace. So we talk a lot about diversity and affinity groups and other things like this have come up. One thing, um, our organization tends to go into things like this fully once we embrace it. And sometimes maybe we don't think well enough in advance about like potential pitfalls or risks. And so I'm just wondering if you, TechSoup or others have any comments about that because there are some human resources departments that um, are all for affinity groups in large employers and some that aren't because they can create 
risks of discrimination and exclusion of some people if there's not an affinity group for everyone. Um, so I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on that in, in the nonprofit sector. I do. Thank you. Thank you for that. That's such a great question because before we launched our employee-led group at TechSoup, that was a question that came up. So if we have a, if we have an affinity group for women, are we saying that men can not join the call? Like, what's up with that, right? And so what we decided to do, and, and I recognize that not every organization represented here has a legal team that they can lean on. But um, just sharing our story, we were able to reach out to our legal team to have them to do some research. We did some on our own as well, just to look at um, the law around affinity groups, right? We wanted to know what, what can be done, what can be said, what can we not do? And once we understood um, the law and, and our legal team was so thorough, they were able to find various like case studies so we could look at. And so with that, we were able to create a policy. And so in the policy, it's understood that number one, everyone is invited to every affinity group. If you are interested in an affinity group, you are allowed to show up. Um, if you are not of that affinity, then you are viewed as an ally, right? That is how we, that's how we make it inclusive at TechSoup. Another thing that we do is, let's say there is a very sensitive matter that needs to be discussed. Well, we view that as any other meeting that you would plan with a colleague. If you, Kathy, if you were planning a, a personal conversation with an, with an employee, you're not going to promote that across the organization. You're not going to send an all staff email that you're having this one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? Well, we encourage our affinity groups and our employee-led groups when there is a moment or an instance where there has to be some personal conversation, it's okay to not market that to the large organization because at that point, it's it's something different. Now this is a one on one. This person needs some one on one uh, attention or time. And so that's how we make it inclusive. So I would say, any resources that you have um, to legal, uh, it, it, just doing research, right? I think start there, and I would say then from there create a simple policy. Uh, and when I say simple policy, very simple, right? One that encourages people to create a group and not demotivate them, right? With a lot of jargon and it's very, very inviting. And again, I think that we have um, uh, templates in uh, in Quad. So folks are interested uh, in getting access uh, to Quad for these additional resources, please feel free um, to reach out. But thank you so much, Kathy. That was such a great question. And I'm sure other folks are thinking um, the same thing. So thank you so much. I am going to hop over really quick to discuss some organizational culture, some ideas for that. And um, and then we'll open it up for any more uh, discussion in Q&A. But when thinking about diversity days, organizing diversity days can be a powerful tool to celebrate and educate uh, around different uh, cultures within your organization. And so these events should highlight traditions, you know, histories and contributions of various groups, uh, fostering a deeper understanding and appreciation among uh, all employees. So for instance, um, May is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Not sure if you're aware of that, but check this out. Did you also know that May is Military Appreciation Month? So just knowing these bits pieces of information can really be a great opportunity for learning, for engagement, uh, for celebration. So one of my favorite observances, if you are, <laughs> if you've been with TechSoup, been a part of TechSoup and been a part of my webinars, you probably already know what I'm about to say. But one of my favorite observances has to be Global Diversity Awareness Month. It, it happens in October. And it is such a great opportunity to provide a mix of events and activities that really celebrate diversity uh, in your organization. And I led a webinar about how to leverage it for impact and for inclusion. And I've linked it here on the slide. And if you also want a 
uh, a list of diversity days. I've also linked the uh, UN's list of international days and weeks there. So put, put in the chat really, really quick, because I'm this uh, all of this makes me really, really excited. But put in the chat, what are some days or observances that your organization plans events around? Anyone, anyone. Let me see. What are you all doing across uh, across your organization? Uh, I know a uh, one year at TechSoup, we had a, it was a Black History musical tribute. And it was pre-COVID, so we were in the office and we had like so many employees that are uh, musicians. So they showed up and played and it was just really, really great. Oh, Recovery Month. Yes. Mental Health Awareness. Yes, I believe that's this month as well. Thank you. A Disability Awareness Month in March. Oh, I love how you all are putting the, you know, the months in here. This is great. Oh, this is really, really good. Uh, Women's History Month. Yes, Women's History Month is great. We did a panel uh, last year for Women's History Month here at TechSoup. This is really, really great. And this year we launched our uh, Women's Affinity Group. So that was, that was really special. Uh, thank you all. Feel free to keep them coming. Um, yes, Prop LGBTQ in June. Also in June, Juneteenth. Absolutely. Oh, this is great. I'm so appreciating you all's engagement here this morning. So let's move on uh, really, really quickly to inclusive language. But can you, let's go back one more. Oh. So we're going to talk about inclusive language. I know uh, the slides are getting getting caught up. There we go. So inclusive language. So listen, when we talk about inclusive language, uh, using inclusive language, and we talked about this, right? When we, we had the conversation last time about BIPOC, and you all shared just now in chat a, a, while, a minute ago, just some ways that we can do that. And we have to be mindful of words that we choose and continuously adapt our language to be inclusive as possible. And it's also important that we use inclusive business language. So at TechSoup, we created this uh, inclusive language cheat sheet. And it provides alternative words and phrases for common terms like, how many of you have been on a call and you've heard someone say they're going to take a stab at something? Or you hear someone say, oh yeah, we can kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. I've said those things, right? And there are others. And so we have created a, a cheat sheet just to help provide some alternative words there. And there are other things that we can do, right? There are other things that we can do. Also, when I think about inclusive language, and we'll talk about AI next month, but there are various tools that you can use where you can copy and paste a job description to ensure that the language is inclusive, right? So there are so many ways when we think about inclusive language that we can really approach this to ensure that folks feel a part of the home, right? Because that's, that's the goal of, of this all. And then equitable meeting. Always important to make sure that all meetings are conducted in an equitable manner where everybody's voice can be heard. And that may mean scheduling a meeting at a time that is least convenient for the majority, right? You heard, yes, <laughs> I, I said that just like that, where it's least convenient for the majority. And we've done that in TechSoup because we have people all over the world. And so most of staff operates on Pacific Standard Time, but we have people all over the world. So sometimes what that means is that Folks in California may be inconvenienced by having to have a, a really late meeting or a really early meeting to accommodate for the few staff that are not on that same time zone. Again, going back to being intentional, intentional in how we are approaching our meetings, our conversation, how we're operating uh, organizational-wise in terms of our culture and business. So, I think that um, just I want to conclude here by saying that implementing these practical, I believe these are all practical ideas, would really help build a more inclusive and culturally diverse organization. 
And um, before we move into Q and A, uh, does anybody have? Let me just check to see if there's anything in chat. Mm, I'm seeing some of the some of these terms. Okay, blacklist. Yes, yes. Another is ninja, right? Uh, there was a time when people had that as a part of their job description. They were looking for a marketing ninja. Well, what is that? Yeah, this is really, really great. So this is this is time for us to um, dive deeper into some more conversation if you have questions, but I certainly want to hear from you. I know that we've covered a lot and that is intentional and you will receive this recording and all of the things that I have uh, uh, shared, they are linked in this document. Can you put up language for beginning statements? What, what do you mean? What what do you mean? Uh, language for beginning statements? Do you mean like, I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Were you going to say something, Aretha? I was going to say, feel free to unmute yourself yes. um, so you can ask the question. And yes, we'll be sending out the slides and recording um, by tomorrow. So the question was DEI language for inclusion. Um, the person on the iPhone said, can you put up language for DEI for inclusion for beginners? Oh, okay. So I think I, um, language for beginning statements. Yes, thank you. Okay. So if you're meaning like a, like a diversity statement, I would think that, and correct me if I'm wrong, the person on the iPhone, not everybody still understands what DEI means. So maybe there's some beginner language for this. What's it all mean? What's it all about? Okay. That's that's good. Thank you, Aretha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and thank you, Cheryl. I see your note. Um, so to the person, um, iPhone uh, 145, really, really great question. I would refer you to the webinar, our first uh, part one. I strongly recommend you check that out because there is some language that we shared there um, about that. And then I also think in that webinar, there are other uh, links to some resources that can help you with, with that, as, um, that as well. Thank you for that question. And I see, um, is it Malia? Feel free to come off mute. Sorry, coming off mute was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I apologize. Um, and I apologize, I'm having bandwidth um, issues, so I'm not able to come on camera. Um, but I was wondering about resources. Um, I, I recently had two staff members, um, myself and, and another staff member, um, take a course that was from an organization out of Eugene, Oregon, um, where they reviewed um, Layla Assad's Me and White Supremacy and did a nine week um, program for white identifying and white bodied individuals to really address the um, white supremacy that's been integrated into our existence from birth. Um, and how do we combat that? How do we acknowledge it? Um, and how do we show up better? Um, and I was wondering if you know of any other resources similar to that, or they're not actually, they don't have another um, session with that um scheduled and I have another staff member I'd like to put through that so I was wondering if um if you know of any other resources also if for all the white presenting white bodied people if you've never been through me and white supremacy highly recommend mm. um it oh. really it, it hurts it's hard because you really got to acknowledge some really terrible things in in our white lives but it's also super important mm. anyway sorry um I'll stop talking that's good. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. First of all, um, really appreciate your uh, transparency uh, as well as your vulnerability to share that. Thank you so very much. Um, so your question to me was if I am aware of any uh, other similar resources. And yes, I am. There is a website. I will put it in the chat since I found it. But there is a, I think it's, I was going to say a website, but I think it's more than that. I think it has evolved into something more than just a website. It's more of a program. It's a workshop. And it's all about 
um, white supremacy culture characteristics is what it is. And so one of our leaders at TechSoup went through a cohort all about white supremacy uh, culture and characteristics. And uh, she came back and she did a, um, a small workshop for the organization. What was really interesting about the workshop is one, I honestly did not know how it was going to be received. I just was not sure, right? And um, because again, I'm always thinking about, is this inclusive? And so we had this white supremacy culture uh, workshop. And I'm going to tell you, the response was so powerful that she had to come back and do a part two. And I'm, there were like so many more people in the workshop the second go around. Uh, it was just amazing. There were a lot of moments of silence. And I can tell that it had great impact on everyone in the room, everyone in the room. I, I highly encourage you to, to oh, let me, I think I, this is it. I'm putting this in the chat now. And so you can, uh, I believe that they, I think they still have a cohort going if you wanted to join a cohort to learn more. Um, but if not, just taking a deep dive onto their website and really examining those characteristics of white supremacy culture, it's 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 a lot to think about. It it is. But thank you so much for that question. And uh, I did I shared the resource in chat. If anybody else have any questions or comments, feel free to use raise your hand or just go ahead and unmute yourself for the last few minutes. Question. I see a question really quick. Um not a stupid question. It says African American or black community. I don't mean this disrespectfully. I've heard both and want to be respectful. I love this question. And I know we do not have enough time for me to dive into this. <laughs> I would absolutely love to. But you know what I'm gonna say is it depends. If you have the opportunity to ask the person what they prefer, then you can do that. But if you're speaking of a larger community, and, and I'm just thinking now uh, nonprofit terms, right? Writing a grant, right? Then you would want to use whatever language that you use for, for your organization. Um, but more importantly is finding out what that person or the groups of people want to be identified as. Absolutely great question. And because it's true, not all people who appear to identify as African-American want to be referred to as that for various reasons. So really appreciate that question. Not a stupid question at all. And thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. And I see someone says, Dr. Robert Angelo has a new book, The Facilitator's Guide for White Affinity Groups. Love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that in chat. Any other thoughts or, or questions? Anybody excited to look at uh, AI next month? Uh, someone says, are there any suggestions for an older white dude to connect with young people in underserved communities? <laughs> Absolutely. I would say start with what you're passionate about. Um, when you start with what you're passionate about, then, you know, the youth will, they will pick up one, your intentionality, as well as your, um, you being authentic. And then with that, your passion will, will shine through. So that's my suggest suggestion for anybody of any age, any dimension of diversity, right? <laughs> Start with your passion. Oh, I appreciate it. I am loving these questions. This is called EB Chat for a reason. I love this. We are chatting. We are having a conversation. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Just making sure that we see the questions. And I asked if if you all are excited about the uh the AI chat that we have coming up next month. Did you all register for that? Like, I'm super excited about looking at how to leverage AI for DEI work. Super excited about that.
Well, I don't see any other questions. Just want to make sure I haven't missed anything. So do you have any thoughts, uh, Aretha? Oh, someone said that I'm obsessed with AI. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I'm going to put the link to the June event in the chat. So you can thank come you. And register. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So as we wrap up, thank you, uh, Aretha, for putting this slide up. And if you all have thoughts uh, as we continue to wrap up, please feel free to put those in, in chat. But again, thank you, everyone, um, for not just showing up, but thank you for your participation. It means a lot, not, not to just, not to me. That's not, not little old me. No, but for the community, right? Because the questions that you ask, the information that you put in chat, it is going to be useful for someone else, right? Like this is this is community building. I'm so grateful to, to be in this space with you all. Um, and last, last uh, month, we talked about creating a roadmap or an action plan for a goal that you want to complete by the end of the calendar year. If you haven't already, if you have not done that, consider doing that. Even consider hosting an event or two for Global Diversity Awareness Month. It happens in October. If you start thinking about it now, you can begin planning and getting people on board um, now. It's, and so you're not waiting until last minute. And remember, I shared a link to a webinar that can give you so so many ideas. Well, not so many ideas of how you can really make Global Diversity Awareness Month a hit, I promise. And then don't forget to register for the next webinar. It's happening June 7th. And as I said, we are going to be exploring how to leverage AI to support your DEI work. And uh, if you're in quad, make sure you join our equity and inclusion community of purpose, where we will be continuing to have these conversations, providing you the additional resources, templates, content, events, and so much more. And last but not least, thank you so much uh, for completing the survey last month. Really, really appreciate that. You could please complete this short survey. It's four questions, and it really helps us to develop uh, an online community dedicated to providing peer-to-peer -peer engagement and online events and toolkits and sector insights and so much more. So, uh, and please share with a friend. I always like to say share it with a co-conspirator, right? Because then you two can hold each other accountable. You can bounce off ideas, um, exchange resources and information. So it's a really, really great opportunity to uh, connect, collaborate. Um, so I just thank you all so much. And like Aretha said, the recording uh, will be shared. All of the links will be there. And um, this was a lot, a lot of fun, Aretha. Do you have any questions, any thoughts? I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this was so much fun. Oh, you're muted. Okay. I was trying to, I'm like the other person. I'm trying to find a mute button. No, this is a deep conversation. Um, lots of engagement. I appreciate all you all being here. I told you I always learn a lot when she gets here. So thank you for those transparent moments and a lot of aha moments, a lot of silent moments. So put in the chat um, one takeaway, what you learned today, because I could put in several. Uh, just make my mouth open, make my mouth, you know, so just put in the chat room one of your takeaways for today. Awesome job. They're saying, Lashika, thank you so much. So valuable. Many thanks. Oh, awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of thank yous in the chat. Absolutely. As and I again, for Ubuntu, right? <laughs> yeah, Ubuntu. And see, this is those conversations where you have to think. So when I said put in the chat room one of your takeaways, people are thinking, okay, trying to compartmentalize saying which one do I want to put down so I appreciate it um we can close out here I'll let you say the final words Lushika. yeah I just I thank you all so so very much and what I hope that you walk away with is being a champion for inclusion and belonging it does not have to be complicated and it does not have to be expensive I promise you, if you start with intention and passion and positive intent, assuming a positive intent, journey would be 
so rewarding and fulfilling. Thank you all so much for joining. Hope to see you all on June 7th. And until next time, uh, have a great rest of your, your month. Yeah, I'll see you next month.